Fantastic. Okay. So yes, this session is all about the inner critic. Um, so it's all about, I guess, kind of whatever, I guess, being the best version of our activist self looks like for us. It's first of all important to note that that will look very different for each of us. There isn't this kind of one thing that we should be all aspiring to. You know, we know ourselves. We know what we um, we know what God's put on our heart, and we know what we um, yeah what we value. Um, and so, very much kind of what the best version of our activist self looks like will be very different for each of us. Um, but the way that we speak to ourselves and our thoughts um, can play a big part of that. And it can be one of the things that can trip us up. So um, I thought we'd just explore that today because sometimes it's not um, it's not one of the things really that we spend some time thinking about. Um, so to kick us off, it would be great if, you know, we just close your eyes if you want to. You don't have to. But just bring to mind an image in your head of what you as an empowered activist would look like. Just hold that image then. So first of all, think, what do they look like? So imagine their facial expression, for example. How are they holding themselves? And then maybe imagine what do they do? So that image of you as that empowered activist, what does, what does that person do? And how do they feel? What emotions are they, are they feeling? Now imagine what their self-talk looks like. What are they saying to themselves? Okay. We'll come back to that kind of generally kind of I'll, I'll tie I'll tie back to that. But I'm just going to share a little PowerPoint. And I absolutely love this PowerPoint because it is the most disgusting slide I think I have ever created, but I absolutely love it. Um, let me just see if I can share it. There we go. It looks like it's fresh out of the 80s. Okay, can everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So, yes, this is a little bit cheesy. So if we imagine kind of on the left, our kind of ourself, maybe when we feel our most frustrated as an activist or low as an activist or just kind of like we're feeling a bit stuck and not really kind of where we want to be. And then on the right, us, you know, living in line with our values, feeling like we're, um, like we're activated, like we are, um, I guess, kind of being able to put into practice um, how we would, yeah, how we would most like to be and kind of feeling empowered. There's different things that get in the way um, of, us kind of being able to kind of make that shift. So first of all, it's important to know that practicalities is a big thing. So, you know, it might be that practically 
we're not able to do some things or live in certain ways. Maybe, for example, we want to get involved in, um, I don't know, Insulate Britain, for example, or just a foil or things like this, but actually practically in our lives, there's something stopping us. Like, you know, maybe we are a carer for someone or maybe it's, um, you know, practically there are just things in our lives which are preventing us from doing that. It might be that one of the things that is acting as a block here is training that actually, you know, for a lot of these things, we do actually need physical training to know the know how to do it. Um, And I know that there is Rebel Academy, the Extinction Rebellion are running. So um, it might be that we need to know our know our rights training. We need to need to do the nonviolent direct action training. And that might be the thing that's kind of the next step in it. It might be the opportunities. We actually physically don't know the opportunities that are coming up. So obviously you can join the CCA newsletter, for example, that says some of these opportunities, but that might be one of the things that are getting us feeling stuck. Um, but also down the bottom here, and what gonna, we're going to be focusing on today is self-talk. So even if we practically can do it and we have access to the training and we do the training, even if we know what's coming up, sometimes it's actually our self-talk which stops us doing it. So I think we all have had experiences where we've been like, you know, if I if I opt to do that, then I'll look stupid or, you know, I'm not good enough to do that. Or, um, you know, if I put forward that action idea, everyone's going to laugh at me um, or it's not going to work. It's not going to be kind of able to be pulled off. Um, or I'm just not the type of person that does X and Y. And so I guess kind of self-talk can be a really big problem in itself, that kind of critical self-voice. Um, but also that can also stop us from doing these things. So self-talk can tell us, you know, well, I can't do X and Y because who's going to look after the dog, for example. No one will want to look after the dog. But it might be that actually if we step outside of our comfort zone and ask someone, they might say no, but it might actually kind of solve some of the practicality problems. It might be that maybe some of our self-talk is stopping us from doing some training because, I don't know, Sometimes it's just intimidating going to a gathering, for example, or kind of going to some training. Or it might be that we're missing out on opportunities because we're telling us that it's kind of not right for us. Um, So self-talk can really kind of wrap us in knots sometimes. And if you just kind of bring to mind um, that image again of what us as kind of our best version of ourselves as an activist looks like, if you just bring that image to mind, If you imagine that that image telling themselves that they're not good enough, that they can't make a difference, that they shouldn't try, just kind of notice what happens to that person in the image when that's the kind of things that we tell ourselves. All that empowerment just kind of drains away from that person. Okay. So I'm just going to stop sharing this there we go and it I guess it can be really hard as a obviously we we can be self-critical generally in our day-to-day lives but there are specific things as activists which I think makes that even more difficult first of all I think it's because we're doing things that are outside of our comfort zone and so that is often where these self-critical thoughts can creep in you know, if we're if we feel safe going through our general day to day, then that's kind of, um, you know, there's a kind of safety in that. But we are we are actively putting ourselves in situations which are outside of our comfort zone, which maybe we've never done before in kind of lots of different ways. Um, and also, I guess we're putting ourselves in vulnerable situations um, socially as well. So. I guess if we're taking a very strong stance on climate change very proactively, that invites criticism from other people. So it might be that kind of other people want to bring us down, be that members of the public doing helpful heckles like get a job. Um, Or it might be kind of critiques from family or friends and things like that. So we're kind of putting us by, you know, doing these things that are outside of our comfort zones and very public actions. We're almost kind of putting ourselves in situations where we can be more easily critiqued. And also, I guess, with activism, I mean, sometimes people do tell us our roles, like, can you bring a banner or can you do the banner or can you do X and Y? But quite often we're volunteering ourselves for these roles. So that can be a vulnerable thing as well, um, because 
I guess the, the critical voice can creep in and be like, who are you to opt to do that role? Who are you to organize this thing? Or who are you to do this or that? Um, and so that can be a vulnerable thing as well, that we're kind of opting to do different stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think there are different types of thoughts that can trip us up. And I'm just going to share a little document um, of some of them and just give examples of how this can be, um, how each of these can kind of relate to um, activism. There we go. And some of you might have seen these before, but it's just good to kind of be aware of them. So there are these things called, they're sometimes called unhelpful thinking styles or unhelpful thinking habits. Um, and there are loads of them. Um, but the this document just outlines some of them. So how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve on this document. Um, and we'll just kind of, I'll just go through them and say a little bit about how each of them might kind of present in different ways. Um, with regards to activism. So first of all, we have got mental filter. So this is basically where we only notice certain things. So it might be, for example, that we really zoom in on all the times where we make mistakes, but we don't acknowledge the time where we get positive praise. Like when anyone maybe says like, I don't know, I think you could have done that a bit differently. We dwell on that for kind of, you know, the next week. But when someone says, oh, that's nice, we kind of dismiss that and don't really kind of notice it very much. Um, or it might be that we notice everyone kind of frowning in a meeting, but we don't notice in kind of a, when we're in a planning meeting, for example, but we don't notice the kind of smiles. Um, so anything that means that we notice certain types of information and we easy, more easily dismiss other ones. Uh, then we've got judgments. So judgments can be basically kind of any any judgment that we can make up about ourselves or others. So um, judgments might be things like I'm not good enough for this or um, this action isn't good enough or um, I'm shy um, or it might be people don't want me here um yeah any anything really um then there's predictions so it could be predictions like um i guess it could be predictions about climate change so we're never going to make a difference there's no point in trying um, or it could be a prediction about you know if i ask this person if i can get involved then they'll dismiss me um, or I'm not going to be very good at this. Anything about the future, which I guess kind of anything about the future, which hasn't been, yeah, hasn't been set in stone yet. Emotional reasoning is an interesting one because it's basically when we use it, we kind of portray our emotions as truth. So I guess I feel stupid, so I must be stupid. Um, I feel embarrassed, so this must be embarrassing. Maybe that can kind of sometimes happen in an action. So um, I'm embarrassed doing this, therefore this might must be an, an embarrassment that I'm causing. Um, or it could be I feel afraid, so I must not be able to do it. Um, I feel afraid, so this must not be for me, for example. Um, or it could be, I think those, yeah, those are maybe some of the, some of the more prevalent ones. Mind reading, I guess it's kind of thinking that we know what people are thinking, that we know what other people are thinking. So when if someone frowns, for example, not thinking that it's, that they're concentrating or that they're tired because of the morning or that they are, um, I don't know, straining to kind of look at the screen, but a frown means I disapprove of kind of what this person's doing. So taking either kind of a lack of information or information that could have lots of different interpretations and, inter and thinking that we can read people's minds. And it's often, sadly, that kind of, that negative interpretation. So it kind of link, lots of these kind of link together. So that can link to catastrophizing, like always thinking the worst case scenario is going to happen. 
and then mountains and molehills. Um, so, for example, I don't know, mountains and molehills. It could be that an action maybe doesn't go like very well, and it's you know it's critiqued um, quite a lot. But actually, in the grand scheme of things, does that really matter? Like actions don't go very well all the time, and actually, kind of even though. Uh, when things don't go initially really kind of exactly how we'd like it to go um actually you know how much does that matter in kind of the, the grand scheme of things okay so then other ones are compare and despair so this one can be difficult i guess especially when we're working with such amazing wonderful people <laughs> kind of um we've all got different gifts you know thankfully we're not all the same and that's the beautiful thing about Christian climate action and many movements like this. But because we are all different and, you know, there are so many amazing gifts in, in the movement, it can be very easy to compare ourselves to other people and kind of feel like we fall short. Um, and I guess it's kind of instead seeing it as kind of we're all working together, we're all kind of piling in um, and we've all got kind of beautiful things of value to bring. Um, the critical self is just, you know, those horrible, I'm stupid, you know, I'm not good enough, I'm going to make a fool of myself, I don't know, it can be loads of different things, like I, whenever I speak, my voice sounds funny, you know, whatever it is for each of us that kind of that critical self comes in. Black and white thinking, so this is an interesting one, actually, because I guess a lot of the world is grey, lots of people have kind of, you know, gifts about them but other things that are kind of difficulties and that's the thing that's about I guess working the movement is so wonderful that we can kind of accommodate everyone's gifts and the things that we all struggle with um but I guess kind of noticing that with I guess with with each with each other but also kind of thinking like if an action doesn't go amazing then it's a failure if I don't do this role incredibly then I've absolutely failed um, if I haven't delivered 100%, then there's no point trying. So that black and white can trip us up because, again, a lot of the world is actually, it's not black and white. It's it's okay. It's mundane. It's um, We just kind of get by day to day. Uh, shoulds and musts. This is an interesting thing as well that can stop us getting involved in stuff. So it could be a similar thing to the black and white thinking. So I must do this 100% or there's no point in me trying. Um, or it can be lots of shoulds and must really I guess it can be it can I guess our, we can trip ourselves up in our lives when it's like I must do everything I can to tackle climate change I must be an amazing mother I must do incredible at my job I must you know be an amazing spouse and friend and all these things which can then trip us up because basically we've got six full-time job full-time jobs that we're running with there um and yeah so that can be kind of something that trips us up shoulds and musts um and then the last one on this list is is memories so that can be just kind of memories of when you know things from our past that haven't gone to plan or where we felt embarrassed or let down by people all those wonderful things that our brain stores up for when we're feeling insecure when we're feeling a bit shaky about how to take the next step as an activist, those can sometimes pop up as well because all areas of our lives are, are connected really. Um, so yeah, I'll just give a little bit of time before I kind of move on to kind of what can we do about those thoughts just for people to digest them because I'm aware I've done kind of a, a whistle stop tour. Um, but we'll have some, I think we'll go into breakout groups as well to kind of discuss them and think about kind of what, because there's often one or two or or more, you know, we often experience all of them, but there's often kind of a few that are most, um, what's the word, kind of most prevalent for us. So I'll just kind of scroll up again, and you might just want to note whether there are any of these which are kind of more more prevalent for you. And then I'll scroll down again in a bit.
So I'll stop sharing that for now. And I'll just share the PowerPoint again. There we go. Okay, so then the next thing is what can I do? So first of all, just to say that, you know, it's not a these kind of self-critical thoughts are not that something that kind of changes overnight, but we can we can almost, I know this sounds cheesy, but kind of become friends with them is kind of my ultimate goal. <laughs> um, but yeah, just kind of a little, just kind of a little step by step here, but it's often kind of, you know, an ongoing, an ongoing um, process really. So the first step in everything is always noticing the thoughts. So I guess kind of the reason why we look through that kind of list is because just noticing the pattern of actually, ah, oh, that's these thoughts that make me feel distressed or frustrated, whatever that kind of difficulty is, um, that's the pattern that I'm kind of struggling with at the moment. Um, and the next thing is normalizing those thoughts. So, you know, we we all experience those types of thoughts. You know, some of us might get them more than others or they might feel kind of more distressing to some of us than others, but they are really normal to experience them. Um, and yeah, they, our brains are wonderful things in the fact that they throw a whole load of different thoughts at us throughout the day. And that's just the brain doing what the brain does. Um, and some of those thoughts are gonna be kind of more helpful for us than others. Um, but I guess the third step in knowing it's just a thought, sometimes those thoughts can actually be more difficult if we try to stop ourselves from having them. So if we almost wrestle with that thought and go, I shouldn't be having this thought, this is a ridiculous thought, why is it coming back again? Then that can actually draw more attention to the thought. I mean, it's more likely to come back again or kind of stick around for longer. So knowing that I've noticed this thought, it's just a thought, like, that's all it is. It doesn't mean that it's truth. It's just literally a thought that's kind of being thrown into our mind. Um, and it can be helpful to kind of almost kind of personify that as like, oh, the thought bullies back, kind of the thought bullies firing abuse, saying I'm not good enough. I can't do this. I can't do that. Um, but yeah, just kind of letting that thought drift away. Um, and then, yeah, if we want to kind of after that, think about what might be an alternative thought, it might be helpful to think of what would I say to a friend in this situation or how might I speak to my children? Because obviously um, I'm sure that most of us speak to ourselves in a much more compassionate way to our children and our friends than we do to ourselves, sadly. Um, is this helpful for me to be thinking this right now? So just kind of what is actually going to be the most helpful thought to me have right to be having and what is the evidence here? So if we are getting those self-critical thoughts because someone's frowning, for example, that is literally what's happened. Someone is frowning. That is it. Like there's no further evidence that we have after that. And that could mean a whole host of different things. Um, or for some things, there's actually no evidence. Like, I don't know how going to this event will go. I've um, And the last one is, is there any training I can do? So for example, there are some things where we might get the critical thought of, I don't know, I won't be able to I'm not able to do an arrestable action. And then it might be that, you know, we might have that self-critical thought and we might be like, okay, I can turn that thought around, but actually there is some other things we need to do as well as kind of deal with the self-critical thoughts. Like we, we practically might need to, you know, we need to put some things in place. We need to do the training. We, we, we might need to kind of speak to some people. Um, so I guess kind of, Another element of kind of moving on from the self-critical thoughts is actually kind of what practical, what practically can I do? If I think I can't do something, what is the practical steps that I think I need to be taking um, to maybe prepare myself to do that? If, if that's something that fits in line with my values and I want to do. So, yeah. I'll stop sharing that now. And then I'll also stop the recording. There we go. Are you sure you want to stop the recording?